fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. in lawless years of the western United States, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the new territory. No outlaw could match his courage and resourcefulness. No sheriff or marshal did more for the cause of justice. It was the Lone Ranger who made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. begins in the general store and... Hey, Mag, I hear the law can't make Bull Nugent talk. He must figure somebody's going to protect him. Bull and his whole gang will get good long terms if they don't tell who was behind them. Who'd you figure it was, Mag? I don't know, but I'll tell you folks this much. Yeah? The same gent that caught up with Bull will find out anything else that needs to be uncovered. That's something you can bet on. I heard it was a masked man. A masked man? <laughs> Mustang Mag drove her buggy up the trail to her ranch house. It was a two-hour trip from town. And when she reached home... Order! Order, dead wretched! Hey, Jeff! Hi, Jeff! Calling me, ma'am? Carry the grub you'll find here back to the mess house. Then on hitch this here hole. Yes, sir. Uh, say, Mag. Well? There's uh, somebody up to see inside. Yeah, well, who? I reckon you know... Fella rides that big white horse. He's here? Get out of my way. Where are you, friend? Where are you? I'm in there. In Missouri. Oh, hello there, Chondo. Didn't see you first. White friend, him want to talk to you. Sure. What do you think I'll do? It's my house, ain't it? You couldn't keep me out here, could you? Oh, uh, howdy, friend. I heard you was here. Well, I came to see you about the news in town, Meg. Uh-huh. Beats all, don't it? The bull must be confident of protection. He and his men not only kidnapped your niece, but haven't the chance to escape conviction. We know that Bull himself had nothing to gain by it. 
He was obviously hired for the job, but he still refuses to tell who hired him. And uh, you figure he won't talk even when it comes to the trial? I doubt it, unless... Unless what? Unless he's tricked into talking. You got something in mind? Yes, I have. Golly, if I was only well enough to be on my feet again, I'd see that that there pole cat talked. You'll stay in bed, Missouri, until you're well. Bull gave you a bad beating. And for all the good Missouri would be, bed's the place for him. Mm, so you think I wouldn't be no good, do you? Why, I'd take them fellas yeah, and... I... get beat up all over again. Now you keep shut. But... Uh... You hear me? You stove in old fool. Keep shut. Ah. What? Yes, sir. Uh, now then, uh, what were you going to say? From what Missouri and I have been able to figure out... Garrick of the Box G is the only man who might have hired Bull. What would he have to gain? The option you hold on that government grazing land. I was going to give that up anyhow. But Garrick didn't know that. According to Missouri, you found out he wanted you to let your option lapse so that he could lease the land. You decided to wait before making up your mind. For all Garrick knows, when the first of the month comes, he'll lease that land again. Well, I did kind of wonder what was up. I found out that government land was more than I could use for the size herd I got. Now, Garrick ain't got near as many critters as we're my brand. Just what would he want with all that grazing? That's up to us to find out. But the fact remains that he's the only man in the district you've had any kind of trouble with. Since Murp Morton was jailed. Right. So long as he's our only lead, we'll have to assume he hired Bull until we have reason to believe otherwise. Yeah, yeah, I reckon, but... Just... Ain't the masked man on us right, Mag? Don't you set up to argue with him. Didn't I tell I you to... I ain't saying nothing, Mag, I ain't saying nothing. Then quit making so much noise, keeping quiet. If Garrick hired Bull, and Bull is depending upon Garrick to see that he's never convicted. Otherwise, Bull wouldn't hesitate to talk. That's so... If Bull could be persuaded that Garrick either wouldn't or couldn't help him... Then he wouldn't be able to talk fast enough. Is that what you're thinking? Right. Well, how are you going to do that? There's the way, Mag. But the less you know about it for the present, the better. Hey! Thunderation, you're keeping secrets from me again? You're worse than Missouri. But like Missouri, Mag, I do it only for your own good. But listen, you... <laughs> Didn't warm it out of him, did you? Blast it all. There's one gent besides me you can't order around. Uh, you keep still. I'll... Then you do what? I'll duck you for the time you've been laying abed, that's what. Never knowing what's going on is enough to drive a female loco. <laughs> That evening, in the well-hidden camp... Almost finished, Hunter. Uh, you yeah. wait, me fix them. I have a bad light to work with. Uh, me get them. Be sure you get the scar exactly right. That's the most important detail of all. Make it look as though it starts just above the eye... and ends about a quarter of an inch below the hairline. Uh, you know who I'm trying to look like, don't you, Tutter? Uh, who is that? Scar Higgins. He's a wanted outlaw. He'll be known here because I've seen reward posters around town. Um, what you do? Tyler, before we can act, we must find out what Garrick is planning. When we've learned that, we can go ahead with our own plans. Uh. Whatever Garrick has in mind to save Bull, Bull must know of it. He wouldn't keep silent just on the chance that Garrick will help him. Bull isn't the kind to take anyone on trust. All right. We know that Garrick hasn't gone near the jail recently. He couldn't take the risk of being seen talking with Bull. Mm. In other words, if I were thrown in jail, it's possible that I might convince Bull that I'd permitted myself to be arrested in order to get a message to him from Garrick. You get jail? That's why I chose this disguise. When the sheriff sees me, he'll think I'm Scar. Well, maybe Bull know your voice. That's the chance I'll have to take. How you get out? That's where I'll depend upon you, Kimosabe. Now listen to me. Uh -huh. I learned a number of things while watching the jail to see if Garrick had any way of communicating with Bull. Uh -huh. For one, I learned that the jailer opens the sheriff's office each morning at six, cleans out, takes food to the prisoners, has everything ready. The sheriff and his deputies arrive an hour or so later. Uh -huh. What you want Tonto to do? 
You'll have an hour while only the jailer's on hand. Act as you think best. But act tomorrow morning. If I haven't the information I want by then, it isn't likely I'll ever get it. Let me get you out. Uh, the sky is ready now. Good. Here, Silver. Call Scout Hunter. You ride as far as the edge of town with me. Then I'll leave Silver with you and go the rest of the way on foot. Here, Scout. Hip. Ready, Tonto? Huh? Me, me ready. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on. Later that evening, Bull and the two members of his gang who shared his cell were discussing their situation. You sure got a lot of confidence in Garrick Bull for a fellow that... Shut up. Huh? You mentioned that name out loud just once again after I've told you not to and you wish you hadn't. I'm sorry, Bull. It just slipped. Then watch yourself. You trust him, old Bull? You really figure he'll get us out of here? He's got to, ain't he? Well, I don't see... If he don't, then we talk at the trial. The only way he can save his neck is to see that that there trial don't ever come off. But even so, they're still... Get down to here, there. Keep the farm in cover, Crossy. He makes a move and I blast him. You don't need that gun. We'll be the judge of that. All right, stop right there. Howdy, Sheriff. Who you got there? The next door neighbor for you. Yeah? Scar Higgins. You're mistaken, Sheriff. Am I? That's something we'll see about. Now, get on in there. And just as soon as I get word to Sheriff Macy over to Mesquite County, we'll soon find out whether you're Higgins or not. Scar Higgins, eh? That gent's wanted right bad. No worse than you. Come on, Frosty. That'll do for that fella. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like we got company in the next cell, boys. We ought to find Bull. it. Eh? Sheriff gone? Sure. What's that? I want to you... talk to you. Step over here. What's the matter? Got a message for you. For me? I don't recollect you and me ever meeting a four scar. Where would you get a message? My mess- name isn't Scar. But you just I disguised myself to look like Scar to get in here. Eh? Huh? You loco? I had to see you. Say, hey, listen, stranger. I seen that scar in your face for myself. What kind of a story are you trying to tell me? And what's your game? You think I'm not telling the truth? I know you ain't. What's he up to, Bull? Keep out of this. Stranger, whatever your game is, it won't work. Put your hand around the corner of this cell. Huh? You heard me. Reach around and draw your hand across this scar you say you saw. I don't get it. You will when you've done what I've told you to do. Well, I... Hurry. Where are you? Right here. Raise your hand a little. There. Well, I'll be. Now look at your hand. Yeah. Where is it, boy? Paint. That scar was painted on his forehead. He was telling the truth. You think I'd let myself be arrested as a badly wanted outlaw unless it were important that I see you? What is it, stranger? What's up? Listen carefully. I'm going to mention a name. I think when you've heard it, you'll find what I have to say worth listening to. Go ahead. The name is Garrick, Bull. Garrick. <laughs> At a little after six the following morning, the main street of the small western village was deserted. But suddenly a figure burst from the sheriff's office. It was the jailer shouting as he ran, and the town sprang to life. Help! Help! Scar Higgins, Buster! Get the sheriff! Get out of it! Arrest him, Buster! Scar out of jail! Help! Help! Hey, what happened? The jailer said there was a sca- jailbreak. That's what he's yelling? Was it Scar? He said got loose? Who's seen the sheriff? Is there no deputies around? They're going to get away. Hold on to your side. Now, now, what's this all about? Get your breath and tell it straight. The Indian come in, held a gun on me. Made me unlock Scar's cell and... Look there! <laughs> there they go now! Shoot them down! Get them up! Get them up! Get them up! Get them up! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. Racing out of town, the masked man and Tonto rode until the Lone Ranger saw that they were safe from pursuit. Then... Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, 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 Tonto. Tonto, ride on to Mustang Mags. Deliver a message for me. Uh -huh. What me tell her? Just this. She's to be at the sheriff's home at 8 tonight. At his home, do you understand? Not his office. Now, me tell her that. She's to be there without fail. Uh -huh. Then on your way. I'll meet you at camp. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. All right, old fellow. It's camp for us. Come on, Silver, come on! That same morning, Garrick had called on Mustang Mag. He was a lean, weather-beaten, shifty-eyed fellow of nearly 70, although he looked 20 years younger. He was notorious for his greed and sharp practices. Mag, who stood upon the steps of her front porch, made no pretense at friendliness. Yeah, you can go on about your business, Garrick. Maybe I'll take up that option. Maybe I won't. If you're curious to find out what I'm going to do, you'll learn all about it by the first of the month. Mag, you're a cantankerous old maverick. Now what use you got for that government land, huh? What use you got for it? None at all. There, you see, you're doing just this to rile me. You don't want it, but you don't aim to see nobody else get it. That ain't so. Well, then what are you talking about? I don't aim to see you get it. Great day. If I ever caught myself doing you a good turn, I wouldn't be able to look myself in the face. You'll be sorry for this. Now, mind you, don't say I didn't warn you. Are you threatening me? I warned you. Don't ever say I didn't. Get out of here. Now, you can't do get that to me, Get out of here. Man. Before I forget I'm a female or a fine man and start saying what I'm thinking. I tell you, man. Get on that fabbing coyote of yours. No, 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 no. Don't you hit me. I don't want to hit you. But you get off my property and stay off, or I'll do worse. Now, scat, you hear me, old walrus? Scat! You wait, you just wait. Get up. Get I'll up. wait. Get up. I'll be waiting with a club in one hand and a six gun in the other. Sneaking old walrus. <laughs> That's a telling him, man. That's sure a telling him. I hear it all. Missouri. It, it done me good. You put down that window and climb back in bed where you belong or I'll ambush you. Uh, put down that window. But I still say it was a joy to hear you. Nobody around here with the sense of a mutton-headed sheep herder. Missouri climbing out of bed when he was nearly killed. Garrick there trying to... Well, doggone if it ain't Tonto. Uh, hi there! Oh, 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 oh. Where's the mask oh. man? What you doing? You here? listen. Huh? You, you go to Lawman's house tonight. What? What? Go for? one at eight. White friend say that. Now, just a minute. Let me get this straight. Mask fella told you to tell me to go to sheriff's place. That's right. At eight this evening. Uh, what for? Uh, him not say. Carnation. Him I... say you not fail. He expects me to go there just on his say so without no explanation. That's right. <laughs> Diagon, you hide, Tonto. Of course I will. Whatever the Lone Ranger says is good enough for me, and I reckon by this time he knows it. You go. I'll be there with bells on. Isn't that good. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. <laughs> Mustang Mag had no idea why the Lone Ranger wanted her to call at the home of the sheriff, but she obeyed without question. It was exactly 8 o'clock when she walked up the steps of the sheriff's porch. Just a second. Well, evening, Mag. What can I do for you? I don't know. Huh? Then what do you... All I know is that a friend of mine told me to be here at 8 tonight, and here I am. 
good enough for me. Meg, uh, are you loco or me? I ain't. Now, wait. Look, you must have some reason. You wouldn't just come here without... I got a reason. I just told it to you. <laughs> then, uh, then I reckon I didn't catch it. Uh, what was it again? A friend of mine told me to come here. Now, oh, doggone, Mag, can't you see... I told her. What the... I see you were prompt, Mag. I done just as you said. A masked man. Throw up your hands. Did he trick you, Mag? Did he make you come in here so as to get me off guard? Ah, don't be an idiot. Put down that gun. You don't know what you're saying, Mag. This fellow... I'm not an outlaw. You're, you have and a I knew mask. you wouldn't take my word for it alone. That's why I wanted Mag to be present to vouch for me. We've known each other a long time. And I'm here to tell you, Sheriff, that if the masked man's a crook, then, then you're a road agent. But what are you... Sheriff, doing? will you accept Mag's word for me? Yeah. You ain't just fooling, are you, Mag? You really think this fellow's all right? If he ain't, I don't know who is. But that mask... Forget the mask. I have my own reasons for wearing it. We have things to discuss, Sheriff. But not until I know you listen reasonably. Well, if Mag says you're all right... Ever know me to be wrong about anybody? Mm, No. Then don't be as foolish as Missouri to home. I declare it takes the men folks to be stubborn at just the wrong time. Uh, Stranger? Well? There's my gun back in his holster. Now, suppose you explain yourself. I will. Sheriff, you're holding certain men prisoners in your jail. Uh Uh-huh. Bull Nugent and them sidewinder parts of his. They're being held for the attempted kidnapping of Mag's niece. I want to know if you believe that kidnapping was their own idea or the suggestion of someone else. (laughs) That's easy. Everybody knows he was hired for it. But no one knows who hired them. They just won't talk. They did, however, to one person. Yeah? Who was that? Myself. You? How could you talk to them? They ain't had a visitor since they've been in jail. They They had one visitor. Who? Scar Higgins. He wasn't a visitor. He was a prisoner. Till the blasted varmint busted loose. And what's Scar got to do with your talking to Bull? I was Scar, Sheriff. What? I disguised myself to look like him. I wanted you to arrest me so I could get a chance to speak to Bull. You're you're not stringing me? I'm not. Anything this hombre tells you, Sheriff, you can take for gospel truth. Well, I'll be switched. Hear me out. I convinced Bull that I'd been sent by Garrick. Garrick? Why, The man who hired Bull. No. What's more, Sheriff? He's the man who's going to free Bull and his men. Wait, hold on. You're going too doggone fast for me. You say Garrick hired Bull for the kidnap. He did. And he's planning a jailbreak. He is. But, but it just don't seem possible. You willing to go on the stand and testify to that? You willing to put that in evidence? I couldn't appear in court, well, then but what? I can do better than that. Do as I tell you, and I'll prove every word of what I've stated here in front of witnesses. Will you, friend? Will you? You have my promise, Mag. Do that, and I'll... I'll dance a jig on the courthouse step. Oh, wait. This here jailbreak you mentioned. It'll have to be guarded against. We'll have to watch to see that they don't get away with it. You're wrong, Sheriff. Oh? Tomorrow night, Garrick is smuggling guns to those fellows in jail. Before the night is out, they'll make their break. Uh, but and they... you won't stop it, Sheriff. You'll do everything in your power to see that it succeeds. <laughs> been agreed between Garrick and Bull that somewhere near midnight on the night appointed, guns would be smuggled into the jail. As the time approached, Bull waited nervously. Why don't they come? It's like what time you got. Uh, just a second. Ten to twelve. There couldn't have anything gone wrong. Are Quit your fretting. It ain't past the time yet. Wait till it is and then start hollering. Look at Clem there, sleeping. Yeah. Get up. Wake up there. Uh, Don't make what? no noise. Uh, the, the guns here? No, but they ought to be soon. Doggone, I'm sleeping. You fool. You'd go to sleep if they was getting ready to hang you. I'll stay awake and be ready to help when you need it. Uh, yeah, sure. Hey, Bull. Yeah? I was just... Hold it. What was that? I didn't Shut up. Listen. The guns. Who's there? You got the guns? Hey, please. Don't talk. That's your scar. You heard him. He said not to talk. Here, grab that gun he's shoving through. Yeah. And give it here. And take the next one. I got it. Yeah. This one's for Clem. He's shoving another one through. Here you are, Clem. It's all going to gun. Now I feel like myself again. Well, there's that fella out there when he's he... gone. He just passed us the guns and beat it. Well, now what? I'll show you. Deputy. Hi there, Deputy. 
Come back here a minute. Hey, right, deputy. What's the noise for? Frosty, come here. What do you want? Frosty, there's three guns here all aimed dead center on you. Unlock this cell and keep your mouth tight closed or eat lead. Silently, the deputy obeyed. The door of Bull's cell was unlocked and opened, and then the doors of the other cells. A dozen outlaws crept toward the front of the jail in the freedom. Bull and his two armed companions in the lead. They crossed the sheriff's office, opened the door to the street, and then... Surrender! It's the masked man! And the redskin! Blast him out of the way! Take it! Give it to him! Sheriff, let them have it. Right. What the fool? I shot point blank at them fellas and never even touched them. So did I. Because your guns are loaded with blanks. Sheriff, give it to them. Boys, don't let a man get away alive. Come on, Garrett. Give it to them like you said you would. There's Garrett. It's a frame up. Fellas, Garrett framed this so we get shot out and escape. He aimed to shut our mouths for good. Let me at that skunk. He fixed our guns with blanks. Men, hold your fire. You dirty double-crosser. No, boy, no, now, listen, they tricked you. I never put blanks in your guns, honest and never. Blank never places did you didn't. You wanted us killed escaping. You said if we didn't talk, you'd get us free. And then you frame us. No, no, wait. You, you dirty... You... Hold it. Keep them covered, boys. Now, Bull, let's hear again what you just said. Yeah, Bull, don't I you I should keep shot after what you tried to do to us. What kind of a fool do you take me for? Sheriff, it was Garrick hired us to get Mag's niece. He was the one... I'll swear to it, and so will all the fellas with me. Oh, no, you're you right, fool, you blasted fool. You let them trick you. <laughs> Thanks, Bull. That's all we needed. But, but what would you... Bull, it's too late for you to change your stories now. So you might as well know the truth. I was the man who spoke to you in jail, who posed as Scar Higgins. What? You! You thought I was from Garrick and told me your plans to escape. When Garrick brought the guns tonight, Tonto and I captured him. We substituted blanks. Knowing that you'd believe Garrick had wanted you shot down to close your mouths. When the sheriff and these men fired, they shot over your head. But, but we thought... Now we'll all hang. But look here, Garrick, There's I... There's no use in you fellas arguing. You're caught. As long as you're so handy to the calaboose, you can march right back in. Men, get them a-moving. Oh, silver! Away! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>